Hey, hey, welcome into the Big Ten Huddle. I'm your host, JR, and we've got a lot to talk about going on in the Big Ten. I'm joined today by Burke White from the Often Daunted podcast to preview some uh, some uh, Indiana for tomorrow. And then I'm joined by our Turtlehead Jordan, I guess I should say winner Jordan, hey. of uh, Maryland taking down Rutgers. A uh, pretty thorough beating of Rutgers as well. Jordan, how are you feeling tonight, man? I'm feeling great, baby. Hey, five games, five days. Let's go. There you go. There you go. Do the unthinkable. Do it. Uh, Burke, how you feeling, man? Hey, I'm feeling good. These Hoosiers are rolling right now. It's the right time to be doing so. Um, there are a lot of questions with this program. I mean, the fan base is on fire at times, but when is it not? That's just that's just sports at its just best. You know, the, the like we're just infighting to no end. But uh, you know what? It's, it's been crazy that we've been able to finally rally around the product. So it's good to be where we are. You know, we wish we would have gotten it a little sooner and we weren't, you know, fighting for a title or a tourney title to get in. But it's where we are. I uh, I thought like Bloomington was just going to burn to the ground after the Liam McNeely thing happened. And then here we go. Indiana is the sixth seed in the Big Ten tournament. That is how wild everything is. Dude, is that- it's, it's insane. It's insane. And the wildest thing about this whole tournament setup is I honestly would much rather be the sixth seed than that f- fifth seed. Like Wisconsin, that's a that's a sour draw, man. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not going to talk about that game, but if I did have thoughts to talk about it, I'd be saying, look out for the sleepers, Maryland, because uh, there's a reason we chose them to go a little far. So, but before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit of big 10 awards while we wait for some people to get in here. If you are here, please do comment and let us know. Hey, uh, one thing I've noticed, I don't know who everybody's a fan of that watches this show. So if you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever else, go ahead and comment. Tell us who you're a fan of. If you're an IU fan, let us know. If you're a Maryland fan, tell us. Put it in the comment section or in the chat right now. Uh, I'd love to see who you all are fans of and uh, just hear from you on your fan base. Uh, So before we get into the games, let's go ahead and do some Big Ten Awards. Burke, uh, the Big Ten Awards were released earlier this week. Uh, Just to go through a few of them. Player of the Year, obviously, Zach Eady. Defensive Player of the Year was Ace Baldwin in the, what is that, the media. And then I think the coaches chose Zach Eady, right? Yeah. Or something like that. No, 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 it was just Ace Baldwin. I apologize. It was just Ace Ace Baldwin. Baldwin. Yep. Yep, He was overall, uh, it was a co, it was a coach of the year. That's what it was. The co coach of the year, Fred Hoiberg and Matt Painter. I kind of have some thoughts on that, but I know that would make Purdue fans mad. So I don't know if I really get into it. Co freshman of the year, Mackenzie Mbaco, Owen Freeman. I'm sure you love to see that Burke. No, you know, of the year. Uh, this one was a little perplexing to me. He did have a good year, so I can't, and I can't hate the pick, but uh, Mason Gillis from Purdue, just kind of a, a, a sleeper six man of the year, a little bit there. Uh, and then we'll just do the first team really fast. Marcus Damask uh, was in one of them. Jer- Jameer Young was in the other one. And the other four were consistent. And Terrence Shannon Jr., Boo Booey, Zach Eady, Braden Smith. Burke, we'll toss it to you first. What were your thoughts on the Big Ten Awards? Uh, my thoughts were the coaches' selections were wild. Um, it makes me so frustrated when a second team is all guards. Mm. It's, you know, when you're setting up that first team, second team, third team, my dumb sports fan brain. Is set up to be like, you know, hey, he's a second team, uh, second team all Big Ten. No, what position is he? Power forward. He must be the second best power forward in the Big Ten. Uh, that isn't the case for the selections this year. Very guard heavy on the coach front. Uh, that's why we saw Kalel Ware slide to the third team in that one with uh, Malik Renu as an honorable mention, which surprisingly Coleman Hawkins as well, an honorable mention when you, th- you thought he really would have made yeah, it on. The that's third not team. right. It's almost based <laughs> on just the success that Illinois has had. Right. Um, Coleman yeah, Hawkins I, is at least third team. Yeah, He's absolutely. And then six man of the year, six man of the year. It's almost like if you were talented enough to actually have earned that award, you found yourself on a starting t- like, on the starting lineup of a big 10 team this year. So by default, it's going to go to the be- the best team's sixth man. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, did you have any thoughts on the uh, awards overall? Yeah. How, how did Jameer not get coaches and media, just media? What's up with that? I mean, Marcus Damask, is that how you pronounce his name from Illinois? Damask, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So what, 16, 15 points a game. I mean, really going to compare him to Jameer. If it wasn't for Jameer, Maryland would, would we have a win? I don't know if we would have a win. I mean, Jameer, you can't – what team 
Indiana, would you not love Jameer Young on your team? Ohio State, would you not love Jameer Young on your God. team? Oh, my God. Right yeah. now, I would kill – I would kill for Jameer Young right now. No offense. Man. Look, Braden Smith is great. I know uh, I busted on Russ a while ago. Uh, Braden Smith's a great player. I'm not saying he's not deserving a first team like we just talked about. It's a lot of guard heavy. But my, my issue is I, I don't see someone – I think Jameer is better than Terrence Shannon, Shannon Jr. I mean, t- how many games did he miss? No, that that's the factor with him. Like, I, I don't know if he's better than Terrence Shannon, but he was, I mean, the best ability is availability, and he was available this season. Exactly. And I, is Terrence Shannon going to be a great pro? Absolutely. I mean, he can get to the bucket on Will. Yes, Jameer is undersized, but Jameer is a great college basketball guard. And in my opinion, he is the best guard. He outshowed Boo Billy twice. He outshowed him. Granted, they split the series one and one this year, but he outplayed them. He, uh, Braden Smith, that was kind of that was the first game, first Big Ten game of the year, so we can't really compare that head to head. I mean, I don't even know, I forget what Braden even dropped that game, but I mean, I just, in my opinion, that's just me. Jameer, Jameer should be first team coaches and media. I'm not being biased, I'm just being real. Well, and I think uh, a factor of that as well was Maryland season, right? I mean, when you are first team, they're going to look at who are the best teams in the conference. And unfortunately for Maryland, like, I mean, unfortunately for Jameer Young, he was the player on Maryland. It was him and Julian Reese when he decided to show up. (laughs) Yeah, no, you're you're, you're 100% right. And it does does hurt when your team's not performing. I get it. But, I mean, look, you all been around the Big Ten long enough. I mean, you know, we're just new to the conference, but. You're telling me there hasn't been one player that's been on a terrible team to get first team both ways? No, absolutely. I think, yeah, there have been plenty. Yeah. And I take I that back. We, we lost both games in Northwestern, so I take that back. But Jameer, I played Bowie Boo, Boo, both games. No, if I there was, was – like, I was just – I'll go ahead, Dirk. Oh, I was just going to say, Jameer Young deserves all the credit for this. Any success that this Maryland team found this season, yeah. like, Jameer Young deserves all the credit. It's almost like a waste of a season, really, it's sad. Uh, we have Philip here saying Coleman Hawkins should have been should have been second team. Uh, here's my thing: is that I feel like when you do these teams, you do need to account for at least two forwards on the team. And if you were going to put two forwards on second team, it would have by I mean, Kalel Ware was my choice for second team for sure, and then it would have been between Dawson Garcia and Coleman Hawkins. I could go either way on the two. I like both of them a lot. Uh, however, at the end of the day, you know they put three or uh, not three they put five guards on one team i don't think the big 10 has ever been this <laughs> guard heavy in uh in my recent memory i mean uh it's always been forwards it's always been big men and uh for them to do that it's just it's just wild to me I will, um, I will i will comment though coleman hawkins should have been second team i mean third team at the highest he he and my problem with coleman was some days he was there he's kind of like julian some days no, he's there. I was just gonna say, sorry, Some I wasn't gonna. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, dude, it's Julian Reese. It's it's. I, I, it's I, I, you I don't you either get, get it or you don't. And I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but Illinois scares me in March because not that I think they're gonna make a run. Can they make a run? Sure, a lot of people are on them to make a run. They can't shoot that good, and and I think a good defensive team can. I mean, I would not be surprised if they're out the first weekend. That's just my honest opinion. I don't think Brad Underwood's a good coach. I mean. He's getting players in there, but they underperform a lot under Brad. Uh, I might just be on an island there. I might be on an island. That's just my two cents. Well, and I, I pointed out at the beginning of the season that there are the inconsistencies that I think is what gets Illinois in trouble. Yeah. Now, thankfully for Illinois this year, I don't think they had those inconsistencies nearly as often as they did last year, which was exactly what I said they needed to do in order to contend to win the Big Ten this year. Now, unfortunately for them, they didn't have Terrence Shannon Jr. against Purdue one game, but at the end of the day, I don't know where they would have helped because <laughs> Zach E kind of shut him down. You know, if he wasn't out in the fast break against Purdue, he really wasn't doing anything against them. So the, the I almost wonder if Illinois eight. was – oh, go ahead. The game that sticks out to me is that Penn State game, man. They played in the high school gymnasium. Yeah. And, and I mean, I get it. You had, a, what, a 1,000 students, but that you should roll Penn State. I mean, if you're as good as advertised, as good as you think you are, you got to roll these teams, man. I just, I, Purdue did it. Purdue, I, I'm not trying to give Purdue credit. Boiler Express, settle down. But I'm just going to let you know. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm just not, I'm not buying into Illinois. Speaking of Boiler Express, we got Dylan here with a super chat. Oh. Appreciate that. Dylan, two bucks. He says, two bucks for back to back Big Ten champs. Uh, Dylan, all I have to say, I, well, I, I do say congratulations. All I have to say, is please 
do something in the tournament. I, I am rooting so hard for Purdue to do something in the tournament because I cannot stand to see the Big Ten champs in back-to-back -back years not doing anything in the tournament. And I believe in you. I think you can. I just want to see it happen. <laughs> hey, hey, Dylan, that's cool that you got $2. But uh, guess who won today? And guess who didn't? Purdue didn't win today. But Maryland did. So I'm just saying, baby. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead. We'll get into the games here. Michigan and Penn State played tonight. And, uh, you know, eight-point game, but that was also because the backups came in and they were, uh, you know, hit uh, that big man hit the three, former uh, former team manager. That was kind of cool to see him hit that three there. And uh, George Washington, the third, I think, is his uh, <laughs> number there. But George Washington, he came in, hit some free throws there. But at the end of the day, the Penn State defense was just too stifling, and it seemed like every time Michigan had just a little bit of a run, Penn State was able to shut them down, get a few buckets, and get right back in the lead here. This is kind of what I saw happening. I think Penn State is inconsistent, but when they put, put it together, they can put it together, and they can be a really good team. Uh, Burke, what did you see in this game? Well, throughout the first half, it was just Penn State's just relentlessly active hands, just causing fits for the Michigan offense. Uh, 11 turnovers in that first half. I think they had two like down the line of that second. So they really tightened it up in that second half. And you saw in the second half, like Penn State, every single time Michigan was ready to make a run, Penn State had the like break in case of emergency. They, they had a response for everything that Michigan uh, was able to muster there in the second and Honestly, credit to that Penn State team. Uh, yeah, just Zach Hicks just going unconscious. Like, he he gave us absolute fits this season. And uh, I can honestly say I'm not too excited to see him again. Um, but, yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, just a few thoughts there. 20 points, 6 of 11 from three-pointer in this game. Uh, I just checked and realized that it's uh, 57, 66 to 57, so I guess that three-pointer, he must have his toe on the line. I apologize. Uh, I'll make that correction later on. But uh, still, yeah, very good game for Zach Hicks. Crazy to see what he uh, was able to do against Michigan. I mean, Michigan doesn't play a whole lot of defense anyway, but still, to hit six three-pointers in the game, doesn't matter who you're playing. That's impressive. Uh, Jordan, your thoughts on the game? Um, a sleeper, a snoozer. I, I'm going to be honest with you. This is the first time Maryland has played on Wednesday night. I hope it's the last time. Dude, Wednesday night, Big Ten is so bad. I mean, granted, Mar Maryland looked good. I'm not going to deny that. We, we did look good. Tomorrow, who knows what we'll show up to. But Penn State, Michigan, it's just, does that even move the needle for you all? You know what I'm saying? Like, like we had to I force was not excited to, to stay up for this game. Exactly. We had to force <laughs> ourselves to watch this hey, game. I was, I was interested to see how Michigan I was interested to see Penn State. <laughs> I, I was, no, I was interested to, to see if Michigan just all together mailed it in. And honestly, to their credit, they didn't in this game. They, I, they showed uh, more true. fight than I thought they would have. I'm just going to be honest with you right now, though. Mike Rhodes is going to have Penn State somewhere in the next couple oh, yeah. of years. And, and the sad part is for Penn State, I hate to say this, he might not be at Penn State very long. I think he's a very good coach. Yeah, until they until they make some real changes with their priorities, uh, that's all. Wrestling, baby. Be a Wrestling. <laughs> that's going to be a launching pad. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Dave points out here, it looks like Villanova is struggling with DePaul. Villanova bubble is about to pop. Looks like Villanova is struggling with DePaul. I just checked, and it looks like Villanova did come out and win that game unfortunately i didn't have it on so i don't know if they hit some kind of buzzer beater or something like that i'll check let, back hey, later let, but let dave know that would have been helpful huddle. for what'd you say this is the big 10 huddle not the big east huddle well i was gonna say <laughs> that would have been helpful for a few uh bubble teams in the big 10 oh, but, okay uh, okay all right i'll take it back yeah yeah but at the end of the day they won so that the, it is what it is um yeah no i, I Burke, uh, I was excited to see Penn State, and I felt like Penn State played a good game. They have very stifling defense. Uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like Michigan mailed it in, guys. I don't know. Like, they, they had a few it, – it felt like every time Penn State gave them just, like, a little bit of resistance, they were like, oh, okay, it is what it is. I guess we suck. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Like, and, and there were, like, sometimes Doug McDaniel was just at the top of the key, like, plenty of time left in the shot clock, and then all of a sudden he's, like, fading to the side, shooting a three-pointer. It's like, 
I, it just it seems to me like Jawan Howard. It seemed like this all season long. He has no control over this team. He has no idea what he is doing with some of these players. And you saw the stark difference between the two, where Mike Rhodes is still coaching his butt off, trying to get his guys to play as hard as he can because he knows that he's building momentum for next year. When in Jawan Howard, just like, well, I guess we better just go to the tournament and lose and get out of here because at the end of the day, I mean, I, I don't know if Jawan Howard was given. All that much effort. Uh, Philip says here, Juwan Howard gone. Yes or no, guys? I think he stays, but I'm curious your thoughts, Burke. You think uh, Juwan Howard's gone? Or you think he stays? He's staying. There's no way he's gone, dude. They still are on football. Michigan fans have not like recalibrated from the highs that came with that. That like they, I, I honestly think just everybody's been hibernating this whole winter through basketball. And uh, yeah, so you're yeah, saying I, I a national, a national championship for football saved Juwan Howard's job. Uh, po- yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> I mean, uh, Jordan, you, know, what you, you, know, you know how hard it is to fire a legend. I mean, Georgetown proved that. Yeah. They stuck around uh, Patrick Ewing forever. And the, it's it's still in debate if Indiana's proven that. So, Yeah, Burke, I ain't going to lie, man. Y'all are, y'all are harsh on coaches. <laughs> like, I thought Maryland's bad on coaches. Indiana's like, you only won one Big Ten title in two hey, years? No, no. Here. I Yeah, no, I'm all for it. We got to give them the chance to uh, – figure this out and what note what what there are a few programs set up better for just the transfer portal throwdowns than indiana hopefully he's learned some things with the uh swings and misses he's had so we i mean hey if we if we can't learn from our failures like we're just going to be in a never-ending process of firing coaches while they learn from their failures like it's you, you'll be you'll be nc state 2.0 yeah that's all you'll be um, but no, Juwan Howard, I think he has one more year. He can prove himself next year. If they have another year like this, so he's definitely going next year. But he's not going nowhere this year. No. Which is wild because they weren't good last year either. I'll take, let, let me put a caveat on that. If an NBA team comes calling, which I don't see it happening, but if a – if a not even a head coach, even if they call him to come be on the staff. I, I was going to say, could like an leave. assistant coach? Yeah, he could leave the NBA, go back to the NBA. Do you think he would do that though? Yeah, He was there before, right? Yeah. I, I mean – Look, when you you were Juwan Howard, you were a legend in Michigan. So, like, how I put this in perspective is Juan Dixon, if he didn't get into his trouble and he became the coach at Maryland, you know how hard it would have been to fire Juan Dixon, the legend of Maryland basketball. You know what I mean? Or if, let's just say, Gary was 10 years younger, he came back after retirement. Even if he had five bad years, you can't fire Gary Williams. You can't fire Juwan Howard. I mean, they're they're really – he's going to have to force their hand to fire him. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Uh, line I cast Sunny here says extend Juwan. Yes, yes. <laughs> dude. I mean, it's just, it's just if they haven't fired him by now, like it, what would it take? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, this is why I always say don't hire a former player as your yeah, coach. It's hard. They it might do great hard. things, but it's hard to get rid of them. It's hard yeah. to get rid of them. So, um, Dave here bringing up some ACC ball for you, Jordan. Something <laughs> Dave's you're all over it, son. Is that Joe yes, Lenardi's burner account? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Dave, we appreciate you. Uh, Clemson is losing to BC. Yes, I just pulled that game up. They are losing 76 to 53, and it looks like it's going to take more than a buzzer beater to come back for Clemson. If Clemson loses this game, that will be the second year in a row that they win 20 plus games and don't make the NCAA tournament. Oh, they're, they're making the tournament. They're making the tournament. You, you think so? Think, you all don't think they're going to make the tournament? I don't think they will. Not if they lose this game to Boston College. All right, I need a gentleman's bet, uh, JR. We got I've already got slide. I've already got a bet going on with Tricky that I don't feel so good about. <laughs> okay, we'll take another one, me, my man. Take another. They're making the tournament. I mean, come you on. You think so? Yeah, come on. Burke, I don't know. Burke, your thoughts? Sorry, boys. Who were we talking about? I just... <laughs> <laughs> Clemson. 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 Uh, Here, hold on. Sure, Clemson. man. I, I, I yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know one way or the other on them. Give me, give, give me, keep, keep, stall a little bit, Burke. Stall, it's stall. Tough. It's tough, yes. man. You know, you know, it, this question, the computers, no. they come up with these numbers and the computers, everyone thinks these computers are correct. But then you see Michigan State and it's like their dance ticket was punched in April of 2023. Yes, yes. So what are we truth. talking what, with these numbers? I, these numbers, these and, numbers. And, and J- JR, the, you got bracket, the answers yet? Anybody? <laughs> yes, I got it. Bracket, <laughs> bracket, bracket matrix. Y'all got to check them out. I think it's, we talk about them on the podcast. I've seen all bracket time. matrix. Yeah, they're good. They have Clemson as a five seed right now, JR. They're in all the right. tournament. They're, they're alive. All right. The thing I just checked, they have them as a six seed. Okay. All right. But, I, but I won't say they have Michigan State as a 10 seed. Michigan State loses tomorrow. 
they're going to be some nervous rear ends. Dude, I've Sunday. been listening to some Michigan State coverage just because I'm like, I need to hear if they're like falling apart or not. And no, they seem sure as like they they are. Say so it, Burke. Say it, Burke. They're so say comfortable it. in their skin. It is wild to me. Which, which, Burke, you got to think, man. If you could run off, what is it, 25 in a row? How many has he made in a row? It's something crazy he's made in a row, right? Minus COVID. If it, trust me, if we were in that seat, we'd be confident as all get out too. Dude, I am, I am starting to feel like when, because we're just right there, like the same record dish, like just, but like we're done, like in the eyes of everybody, yeah. we're just done. I feel like I am destined to be Rutgers screaming at this bracket. Like last year's Rutgers, just like, what the hell? This team, this team. And for this, this team for me is going to be Michigan State. I'm just like, what the, what? I don't know. I, I let's be honest. Does anybody even want Michigan State to make? I think it'd be great. I don't want Gonzaga. Like all these people with these twenty year streaks. Like when Duke didn't make it the other year, how great was that? It's like it's a great time to be alive when teams like that don't make the tournament. I mean, yeah. See. If but let let's be real. If this if when they get into the tournament, like Izzo's record has an asterisk in my personal record book. <laughs> like why? Just the national. I don't. The, the national media is carrying this Michigan yes. State team. Okay, like 100%. it is impossible. That a team that is like object, like supposed to be this great, how do they lose this much? Yep, it's crazy. Yep, hundred percent agree. We're way off topic now, Jr. I was gonna say we uh, we got Michigan State coming later <laughs> on. Michigan so State we'll, played uh... today, right? <laughs> um, ah, heck with it. Let's just go with Phillips' question right here. Cream Abdul Jabbar, Indiana State. Do you guys think they're in or do you think they're out? They have a good record, but they, I think, have one quad one win. Uh, they did play Michigan State earlier this season, but they lost that game uh, at the Breslin Center. That was Michigan State was playing okay basketball. Um, not so much anymore. But uh, you guys have any thoughts on if we'll see Indiana State in the tournament or not? Bert, go ahead. Yeah, we will. We will. I I just have a feeling that if it comes down to them and someone else, the committee or whoever's making these decisions, they're going to choose Indiana State. They have the story. They have the, uh, you know, the uh, the kid passion firing <laughs> up around this fan base. So I don't know. I I don't I don't think they get in. That's uh -oh. just that's just me. And like I said, I'm I'm normally wrong. So hey, Mark, I'm I'm all for it, man. I don't need Indiana State. Hold on, hold on, boys. You know what's <laughs> happening, right? Holy cow, it's it's rigged. Michigan State is losing tomorrow, and they're going to have Michigan State, Indiana State in the first four out. I just called that 100%. I would love to see a play in game of Michigan State, Indiana State. That, 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 was, hey, be, that would actually, yeah, that would that's be what it's going to be in the first four. Yep. Like they're gonna, they're, they're, <laughs> it's going to be the rematch of what, like 1979, whatever year they played the uh, Larry Bird Magic. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you. I just well, they played this year game. too, but yeah, yeah but nobody cares, nobody cares about regular season. This is something <laughs> okay. on the line. Yeah, I'm telling you. I like it. I like it. Yep, you know, that's how committee works. So the committee will see a storyline and be like, uh, Indiana, they made a run, or Ohio Dude, they, State. Let's take Ohio State for example. They can make a run to the championship Sunday and lose, and everyone's like, Oh, Ohio State's in. Michigan State can lose first game, and they're like, that that storyline's a little better in Ohio State. Sorry, better luck next time. Tell yeah. me the committee well, isn't like that. Well, no, they would be like that storyline was written uh, in spring of last year, so yeah. we really need to yep. commit to that one. NFL and NCAA rigged. Taylor Swift. Like, like they, they're just like, man, 85% of the sports writing industry would look like jackasses if Michigan State's as bad as they truly are. So Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You're 100% right. Dave says they, uh, being Michigan State, are playing Minnesota. They struggled at home, and the Gophers beat them at the bar in, or at the barn and convincingly. Why are Michigan fans or why are Michigan fans so? I think he means Michigan State fans so comfortable. I, All right, enough. Get Dave yeah, on the show. Probably. Send him a link right now. Let's get Dave on the show. <laughs> I don't know. I. Dave, I have how been, do you do it? How do I, I been, get where you are, my man? <laughs> I have been told I'm no longer allowed to comment on Michigan State basketball because I'm too much of a biased hater. Um, I don't. I'm not aware that speaking truth that the team is not all that good and they just have metric numbers is being a biased hater. However, that's where I'm at, and I don't think that they will beat Minnesota. They arguably okay. have less than zero in half of the game of basketball. Their entire <laughs> front court. Like it, it is the opposite. It is the inverse of Indiana. It is like crazy. 
They have Gabe Cups at center. In my Jr. Season. Do it. Go to the real game tonight. Let's do it. Yeah, there it is. Say. I know. I know where Jordan's uh, <laughs> getting into it. So, all right, guys. Uh, Maryland takes down Rutgers, sixty-five to fifty-one. Jameer Young only eleven points in this game, but still was playing a phenomenal basketball game, D- dishing out the assists. Julian Reese was doing well. Also, Rutgers just, I mean, kind of the story of their season. They can't put offense together. Played some good defense throughout the game, but it's hard to play good defense throughout the game when your offense is just doing nothing. Jordan, we'll go to your thoughts first. What do you think? Uh, a couple things. First thing was fast break points, 19-8. to eight. We have been begging on the podcast. If you watched the team last year, they pushed the ball, pushed the ball, pushed the ball. Kevin Willard said this year he has a fun as a Big Ten team. I think Kevin thought, we have to slow it up and play Big Ten basketball. I think for the first time this season, we pushed the ball, and it turned out great. We started off on an 11-0 run. We actually made threes. I'm praying we didn't use them all up in our, for our next five days. If we use them all up tonight, we're done. We're done tomorrow because we only have so many. Maryland basketball only has so many, and we got to decide when to use them or not. Um, but the fast break, I'm telling you, when we push it, when Jameer is in the open court, he is dangerous, and he makes other players great. You just talked about it, Burke. He Jameer makes the uh, the team great. When Juju disappears, it's usually because it's the Jameer show. But when Jameer, I mean, look, everybody's like, oh, only 11 points. I will take 11, 7, and 8 all night. I was hoping to get the triple-double, didn't get it. But Jameer was phenomenal. And then let's go to another part of it was the um, the records. The three times we played records this year, we have held them in their top five lowest scoring totals in the first half. I think it's like 22, 17, and – maybe 23 in the first half. I don't know what it is with Maryland and Buckards, but Maryland dominates records. Yes, we did lose one game to them this year, but we have dominated them on the defensive end all three times this year. And I will say, Ruckards is going to be scary next year, just foreshadowing what they're bringing in. Maybe they can keep some of those players. But it was a great win, a great first step. It sucks. Uh, Jahari Long probably tore his ACL. Actually, his whole knee, I think, fell apart there at the end of the game. I have to ask Kevin Willard why isn't uh, we have a great walk on Ben Murphy? Why he wasn't in the game for the last two minutes? I think the game was pretty much safe. I mean, the game, in my opinion, you all say the game I thought was over like in the first five minutes of the game. Mm-hmm. But we played great, played phenomenal, played good, good defense, shot the ball good enough to win, and that's all we've asked for all year: shoot ball, shoot the ball good enough to win. I mean, look, look at our numbers: Ken Palm fifty-eight, net seventy-seven. We're not a bad team. We just can't shoot. And what, what one in ten and five points or less games decided? I mean, one in ten. If that could just go a couple different ways, it's a whole different Maryland season. But hey, who knows? Five games in five days is very hard. Um, obviously, no one of the Big Ten's ever done it since the expansion. But hey, why not us? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, Maryland, they have one of the best guards, if not the best guard in the Big Ten, and they have the defense as well. I mean, that's why that's why I picked Maryland to, you know, with Lee's help, of course, in the yeah. uh, tournament prediction. That's why I picked them to go as far as I could because they play a Wisconsin team that's struggling right now. They're going to play a Northwestern team that's injury riddled. So, uh, I mean, they definitely have the path in front of them. They can make some noise. Uh, just like you said, Jordan, they got to they gotta correct just a few of those things here and there. Uh, and, let me uh, add one more thing for it turns over to Burke. I, the only thing I wish is I wish we beat, beat Penn State the other night. I really wanted to be on that bottom half of the bracket. I think we match up good with Illinois. Um, Indiana, E, I would take my chances, but it's that Purdue in the semis, and we're going to be playing our fourth game in four days then at that point, if we make it that far. And we just have no depth, and the guys are going to be gassed. This was the game I actually told my boys. I said, we need to blow them out so we can get rest. And I don't think Kevin gave the guys enough for us. It's Man, it's going to be tough. But I wish we were on that bottom half of the bracket. Well, uh, Jameer only played 33 instead of his normal, like, 49 minutes. So, <laughs> or 39, not 49. No, 49. Uh, 49 right. He plays actually more than the game, yes. Yeah. The speed that he plays, he actually doubles yes, uh, yes, part of the yes. time. So, uh, Burke, your thoughts on the game? Uh, my thoughts are on the game. If your team is making their shots, it's crazy what your offense can truly look like. Like you can see what the game plan was. And uh, I mean, that's been an Indiana frustration for arguably three seasons now, like actually all of the Archie Miller era as well. Um, but it's, it's it. Maryland's so such a dangerous pick for me. I had so much faith in this Maryland team heading into the season. I really thought that with Julian Reese, and uh, with Dante Scott, just the experience coming back with him, 
Uh, I just thought Jameer Young was going to just lead this team to something like maybe a third, fourth finish. Um, but he is, he's still the type of guy who can win a tournament for you. Like they, they, there are those conference tournament heroes every March. And he is one of those guys. He, he has the makeup of that. And uh, yeah, if you're not careful, he's going to get you on the right night. And uh, this Maryland team, they, they, they can make a run here. Let, let me just put this out here for you boys. 1984. 2004, 2024. We've won a we've won a tournament championship every 20 years. Furthermore, and you talked about March miracles with the one player, John Gilchrist, 2004. I know you all probably Big Ten, whatever ACC. John Gilchrist won on a show. If you ever get a chance, anybody out there, if you're bored in the off season, watch Maryland's 2004 ACC tournament run. Down 20 to Wake Forest and Chris Paul comebacks. Uh, John Gilchrist beats him. Um, beat uh, NC State Julius Hodge down like 15, and then of course beat Duke in overtime. What a great memory! And I just hope I can have one of those memories again. Because when's the last time Indiana won a Big Ten tournament? Uh, 2015. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't come very often, right? Like, no. I, I'm telling you right now, I would take a, a tournament weekend, a tournament win on the weekend is just. It's something about those three back in the day when it was three days, four days, whatever. But it's just something about that weekend. I, I love conference championship weekend. It's so so much fun. No, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. But before I I was done with my turn, I just wanted to say on the Rucker side, like you could see that this fan base they were so ready to start cheering for Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey like in January. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it. So yeah, Maryland looked absolutely awesome, but it was against a team that was all yeah, yeah, signed yeah. out. Check and like I said, and JR just said it, Wisconsin's a team that's struggling. Maybe we get it. You know, I've always said people that play the day before have a little bit of advantage going into day two. So whoever wins, like now, granted, Maryland probably won't have as big as advantage going to day three because they're just tired. But that team that always wins day one, the day before, usually has a big advantage. Um, one more thing, just to let y'all know, that was Maryland's. Fifth win in the Big Ten tournament in 10 years. So, yes, if we win tomorrow, the almighty Kevin Willard will tie the almighty Mark Turgeon with the tie with the most Big Ten conference tournament tournament wins. Is that sad or is that sad? That's That's the stuff of legend right there. Yeah, how about it? It's so sad. (laughs) I don't know what's happened in Maryland basketball. Well, is it? Is it you came over from the ACC? I mean, no, no, everybody look that that because like the same thing happened to Nebraska football when they came over from the Big 12. Like, no good seasons and then struggling. No, no, no. So like 14, 15, and I'm a six when we made the turn. Mello, Mello was a special player. But that 14, 15 teams, I mean, look, if we didn't get draw, if we, first off, we should have never been a four seed in 2016 tournament. There's no way. We were ranked nine or ten going into the final week, and we get put as the 16th seed against Kansas, the obvious number one. I think that was terrible. Tough draw. But – it has nothing to do with that. Here's my problem with the Big Ten ACC, and Kevin Willard brought it up. It's it's the scheduling the Big Ten does. Like, they do no favors. So, for instance, we're banging out, like, two to three games in ten days throughout the season. Last week of the season, we have a whole week off between games. To make that make sense. And then a couple weeks before, we had another full week off. So we bang all these games together, and then all of a sudden you get these week breaks. Like, I think the Big Ten scheduling is awful, and it's only going to get worse next year with yeah, the add-on. There's no the way it gets better. No, and I just – Look, man, college basketball, something's got to change. College sports got to change. Like the NIL's ruining it. These mega conferences are ruining it. I'll be honest with you, I wish there was a football conference, a basketball conference, and so and then the non uh, non uh, what's it called non revenue yeah. sports. Yeah. yeah. They they just I mean look, dude, there was nothing better than the old ACC, those eight to nine teams. I know you all don't remember that, but you could probably say the same thing. The old Big yeah, Ten. There's nothing better than the old Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like, and look, man, we're always going to be a stepchild in the in the Big Ten. But the sad part is, what we made the comment was we were a stepchild in the ACC, but we were a founding father. I'd rather be a stepchild and treat like a stepchild than being a founding father treated like a stepchild. It's just hey, I don't know, man. Hey, Ed, hey, you're once this merger happens, you are you're one of us now. Oh it's yeah, us yeah. the West we're, Coast, man. We're an old dog. It's, it's us versus the West Coast. <laughs> Or an old dog. Your old but blood man, I, around here. Your old blood. Yeah, yeah. But Jr. I just I, I'll say it has nothing to do with the ACC Big Ten jump. I think the Big Ten style, and that's another thing. Big Ten style kills them in March. These teams aren't built for March, man. There's a reason Big Ten. I mean, the last Big Ten team won national title was Maryland. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> 
Philip has a question for you here, Jordan. Turtlenecks, I think he means turtle heads. Uh, are you truly happy with Willard? Yeah, uh, I am because it's year two. Last year, he was the first Maryland coach. Well, they're about to get me rung up, JR. They're about to get me fired up. First year, first coach in Maryland history to win 20 wins and make the tournament. First ever coach. That's Lefty Drizel, uh, uh Gary Williams, Mark Turgeon, some of the greatest coaches. Mark Turgeon's not a great coach. Gary Williams, Lefty Drizel, yes. Um, so he did a great first year with not much. This year, DHS and Jamie Kaiser were supposed to be these great freshmen. We read everything. And look, John Rothstein, he even said DHS is a stud, possibly one and done, Maryland Dark Horse Final Four. The chemistry on this team and the shooting is what killed this team. Those early losses to Davidson and uh, UAB were terrible for this team, and this team just never got off. Next year is a big year for Willard. He still will not be gone next year no matter what happens, but you have Derek Queen coming in. Sorry, Burke. You have Derek Queen coming in, and then you have to hit that portal. Doug McDaniel should be coming home. Look, man, everybody hears it. All the product comes out of the DMV, and Willard is trying his hardest to keep those players in the DMV. I mean, Jameer is a great grab out of the portal. He did it. So, obviously, he can do it again. I'm all right with Kevin Willard. Is it frustrating at times? Absolutely. Do I like this style of basketball? No. I, this is how boring, bored I, it is. Here's how bad it is to be a Maryland fan. I watched the Maryland-Duke game from 2002. or two, Yeah, 2002, March 2002. And the the pace we played then compared to now, it's just it's depressing, man. It's depressing. I just I want to play fast basketball again. Well, Illinois is trying to get there with you, so and uh, Iowa as well. So I think the more teams keep changing, the more Big Ten overall is going to change. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, we'll see if that happens. But uh, we're going to take a commercial break. Before we do that, do want to highlight Logan Kirkpatrick here? Says love you guys' content. Keep it up. We appreciate that, love Logan, you, because of people like you who like our content. We are. Uh, we do have a couple ads we're going to play, and uh, so if you need to go get a drink, go do whatever. We'll be back in about two minutes. Looking to rep your alma mater or your favorite team in style? Look no further than Home Field. Home Field based in Indianapolis is your go-to destination for premium collegiate apparel. With a passion for comfort and a flair for vintage design, Home Field brings you officially licensed gear that is cozy as it is stylish. With over 150 colleges to choose from, Home Field digs deep into the archives, uncovering forgotten logos, iconic mascots, and legendary moments to create apparel that is truly one of a kind. I'm not saying I'm not just saying this. I've experienced it myself. The moment I slipped into my favorite home field tee representing my Buckeyes, I knew I found something special. The comfort unmatched. The design a perfect blend of nostalgia and style. So whether you're gearing up for game day or just want to show some love for your college roots, head on over to Home Field Apparel. Dot com. Use my code TBTH for 15% off for news, new customers or use my link in the description. Don't wait. Join Home Field today and let your college pride shine. Home Field, where comfort meets nostalgia in every design, tells a story. If you're a serious college basketball fan, you need CBB analytics cb analytics isn't just another stat site it's the ultimate destination for in-depth basketball analysis used by fans and coaches alike cb analytics delivers stats that you won't find anywhere else it has comprehensive stats for men's and women's basketball across division one through three dating all the way back to 2018 from shooting percentages to game recaps cb analytics has it all. Let me tell you, I've experienced the power of CB analytics firsthand. The moment I dove into their stats, I was blown away by the depth and the detail. My favorite stats, the assists and rebound percentages, because it shows just how efficient players truly are. So whether you're preparing for an upcoming matchup or reliving the excitement of one of your favorite games, head on over to cbbanalytics.com with their user-friendly interface and extensive selection. You'll have all the stats you need right at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Try CBB Analytics for free or pay for your pro tier for your basketball knowledge to grow to the next level. CBB Analytics, where every stat tells a story and every game is a masterpiece. One of the worst things in the world is watching yourself talk. <laughs> Dude, that, hey, that was a professional talk. ad read, though. You got it. Thank be- you. <laughs> Say Let's move CBB on. analytics 10 times fast. <laughs> CBB analytics. <laughs> 
All right, let's move on. Burke, we'll talk about your guys here. Uh, so Indiana faces Penn State. The uh, game uh, is not up on Ken Palm yet, so I don't have the uh, Ken Palm predictor there. But Kalel Ware is the leading scorer, Indiana, in the 80s and the 90s with their defense and their offense. And then Penn State is all close to 100 in their defense, but their offense a little bit higher, 74th. On Ken Palm, uh, Penn State, that should say 16 and 16, I apologize, but uh, Penn State coming in hot after that Michigan win. Are you nervous about this game, Burke? How you feeling? What are your thoughts? My feelings are, you all wanted us to play today so bad. This entire conference wanted the, in, the Hoosiers to play today so bad. Somehow this Indiana team rallies around just controversy. It's crazy how like this, this, was, this run the Hoosiers are on, it just came amidst just so much internal just squabbling amongst the Hoosier following the, I mean, administrations, communication with the fans, everything, man. It was a mess. But, man, this, this team has given us something to rally around. Kalel Ware, absolute monster. Like, uh, I, he, last season, he's dissed by Dana Altman. I'm going to say, like, this whole week has made me count my blessings for everything going on with the Hoosiers and would he being able to get Kalel Ware in from Oregon. That's huge, huge. He saw an issue with Trace Jackson Davis leaving. He addressed it, you know, like all these pieces are finally starting to meet the sum of their parts, like Kalel Ware carrying the team with uh, from last year to now, like he's been able to take a 9.5 points per game jump, a 5.7 rebounds per game. It's, it's, Mike Woodson has been able to get something out of him, and I'm so grateful th for that. Um, this Penn State matchup in particular, they have owned us this season. They have. Like, like Ace Baldwin has given the backcourt fits, leading to Indiana's guards just turning the ball over, leading to easy fast break points for Penn State. Also, Zach Hicks just absolutely lighting it up from the outside as he did today. Uh, that has been a recurring theme in our matchups. And uh, – but ultimately, I have so much confidence in this Hoosier team right now. But more so, the actual fact of the matter is that it's arguably impossible to beat a team three times. So <laughs> I'm going to say uh, I like the Hoosiers' chances. The crazy thing is the Hoosiers' route to this is like uh, it's Penn State, who we lost twice too and then the two other matchups that we could ha possibly have like nebraska we lost to them twice good luck beating us a third time nebraska uh illinois played them once so they have a chance we have to actually game plan that one um and then purdue they beat us twice dude good luck beating us three times that's an indiana title and i just laid it out for you wow I'm rooting for it, Burke. I, I am rooting for <laughs> the indiana title the, that nobody no. can beat you three hey, times i'm gonna say Mackenzie and Baco, he got that he got that freshman of the year award, and it definitely was not because he has been like the freshman of the year. He has been the freshman of the last two weeks, and it has been such a great two weeks that he has. He, they were like, "Dude, we can't just give it to like Owen Freeman. Owen he Freeman. cannot be yeah. the only one. Like, we need somebody with a little, you know, pop." <laughs> so they they had to give it to Mackenzie. They had to throw him on there. He's playing. What he's able to do, just his his shooting form, he is a true shooter in every like every way you can imagine, and uh, he doesn't hit at the at the highest rate that you would like him to. Like, but it, it's a, it's all coming. The shot is there, and it, it's it's sad that we're getting it now. I just hope to God he doesn't like turn this into an NBA draft worthy mm. stretch, and uh, somehow we still have him next year. I'll be I'll be interested to see I mean the comment of this game that Indiana's what is it the backcourt they really need to show up and play well in this game. Oh, absolutely. Thankfully Xavier Johnson has been back and been a little bit more under control than <laughs> what he has been at times this season. So that definitely helps them. But at the end of the day, like Indiana, they just need to pound the front court all game long because I mean it, you guys tell me who has a worse front court, Penn State or Michigan State? Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan still, State. Penn State's close. I'm saying, uh, yeah, no, they are. But Michigan State, the our our backcourt in that game got a collected collective eight points, and uh, five of those points were Trey Galloway in the first seven minutes before he went down. Um, it's it, it's 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 barren in the backcourt, but uh, 
Malik and Kalel are capable any night of making up for that. Um, just have to hope we put together for those nights. I will say Indiana last five games shooting 37% from three, as opposed to what they've been shooting, which is uh, <laughs> not nearly as good and normally around like 30%. So if uh, Indiana can shoot better from three like that, that'll, that'll be a, a big part of it. Uh, Jordan, your thoughts on Indiana facing Penn state. This is my little friend here, uh, Bert. This is a uh, Derek queen jr. I've added my little turtle to the mic here. Oh, nice. Um, nice. Um, I, I want Burke. I like you. I think you're a good guy. <laughs> you know, let's hear it. But for some reason, man, I wish the spread was up. I'm, it's not up yet. I'm thinking, like, what do you think? Six and a half, Indiana. You think that's about right, dude? I I don't know. Then because the computers still hate us, dude. Our record is one thing. The computers say we are like thirteenth. Like it's yeah. it's. Well, I mean, like, I, I will say I'm looking at his Ken Palm numbers. I mean, I didn't realize Penn State's 77, y'all 87. I mean, yeah, you dude, are right. The computer's you. aging. You. The computer's yeah, and the, net, the Nets 89, 94. For some yeah. reason, Indiana, I think, does win this game, Burke. I will be honest with you. But I'd be interested to see what the spread is because I think Penn State covers. I think, like I talked about earlier, the advantage is the team that played the day before. I think they might jump on you early, um, maybe have a lead at halftime. Let's take Penn State uh, – uh, halftime spread, but I think Indiana is going to squeeze it out. But I do like Penn State to cover. I don't know what the spread is yet. I'm just thinking like six and a half. I think, Dude, I, think I think the only way Indiana's favorites if it, if like Vegas gives them a five point bonus for fan support. No, no, Indiana is going to be. You don't think Indiana will be favored in this game? Dude, it, I, I, it's going to be crazy. Like it might be a two point game. So you're, th you're thinking like a one and a half, two and a half spread. Dude, the computers are a representative of like. like <laughs> Vegas has to be using some kind of computer themselves, right? Yeah, I hope to I God mean, it's somewhat in line I mean, with Ken Palm. If all we are doing is relying on Ken Palm for everything, well, I, I will say if it's if it's like a one and a half, two I and a half spread, sour about it. <laughs> if if it's a one and a half, two and a half spread, I'm taking Indiana all day, man. I'm just gonna let you know. I mean, all right. I, I think you all Ken can Palm win. just came out with theirs, and oh. they have Penn State winning by one seventy six. Dude, 75. told you, oh. told you. <laughs> They hate us. Every, every, they want us down, Hoosiers. They want us down. We, we, know, we know Liam hates you Around this squad. <laughs> Liam 100% hates you. He's going to Dollar Dollar oh Bill. Oh, my God. Yeah. He, he, he just doesn't – yeah, he doesn't want to – he wants to be another dude. He wasn't doesn't want to be one of the dudes. I, I agree with that, though. Why go be another dude at Kansas when you can be they dude? I mean, that's why I give cre uh, credit to Derek Queen, man. Jared, we're getting off topic again. But I got credit to, Jay, um, to Derek Queen. He wanted to stay home. And I got news for you. They're predicting all these players to leave Maryland. Derek Queen's going to love that. He is going to be the focal point. That's what he wanted. He wants to be the mm -hmm. focal point. And I think that's what hurt y'all in the end. I think he did, he he thought, you know, he played second field to Liam. And now Liam left. It's just shocking that Liam did that. No, but even it. then, like the hope of like Malik is still, if Malik's here next year, like that would, that might have been a potential issue for him. But you did bring up a point that, man, you, McKenzie, if he balls out and y'all have a little run, he ain't coming back. I got news yeah, for you. Yeah, he, no, he no. He killed us. He came onto campus, and in the first interview he did, he was like, my plan is one a year and I'm out. But <laughs> it's crazy. He might be right because I say he is hot right now. He is so hot. That would be wild if Indiana finishes the year with two NBA uh, first round I said, I said, you know what, McKenzie? Go to the NBA. Just win a – Conference tournament MVP for me on the way to a conference title, getting us into the tournament on the way to a historic sixth banner run. And then you can go to the NBA and I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, yeah, if you hang a banner, you can go wherever you want. I agree with that. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Sunny, the Illini cast says, I think I had Indiana in the finals, Burke, in our latest episode. I believe in the hype. So there you, you go, got another Sonny. believer there. That's my guy. Yeah. Uh, and then super chat from Dave. Thank you for the five, Dave. Sorry, I'm at work, so I can't call in. I can do it tomorrow, <laughs> Friday or Saturday. Uh, okay, we'll see, Dave. We'll, we'll try to work something out. Maybe Jay, I got a question. Is, does he pay in for every comment? Uh, yeah, those super chats he's paying for. So I don't know if he's paying for every single one, but uh, Dave, 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 you don't you have to pay up. for every single one. But we appreciate gonna, it if you it's want to be called the, the Big Ten Huddle with Dave here soon. If he yeah, keeps it up, yeah. Derek, follow me. Uh, <laughs> Big wallet Dave on the Big Ten Huddle. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, I think if I was going to give uh, a prediction for this game, I do think that Indiana takes it. I, I don't know how close I would have it. Maybe maybe two or three points or something like that. But I could see I could see Penn State not being able to score toward the end of the game unless they hit some kind of three or something like that to uh, to make it close. But I will uh, I will take Indiana in this one, even though the metrics hate them. Burke, do you have a prediction for this game? Um. Low scoring because hopefully they're missing their threes. I'm going to say Indiana 71 because we need to win that race to 69. Penn State set uh, 66. All right. Five point game. Yep. Uh, Jordan, you got a prediction? Well, I'm, I don't know if you all know this, man, but I got a perfect bracket in the Big Ten huddle going right now. I'm just going to let right. you all know that. Um, Good deal. Uh, I'm trying to get that t shirt. Um, I'm trying to pull up, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I picked Penn State to be Indiana, and I've gone back and forth so far, so I'm taking Penn State. Sorry, sorry, Burke. Uh, hey, Penn State, okay. we'll go um, – how do you lay this score? Uh, we'll go 62 to 59. You and the computers both, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's against us. It's just uh, I don't get it. <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, let's move on to the next one here. We got Minnesota, Michigan State. Uh, we are all star- starkly against Michigan State, uh, apparently. So, you know, that's uh, it is what it is. I'm sure uh, all of well, us will I, probably be picking it, Minnesota, but maybe not. We'll see no, what yeah. we think. Uh, Burke, you sound like you got some thoughts. What do you think? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, this Minnesota team seems a little, like, uh, uneasy right now. So, like, there's word coming out that Dawson's shopping himself, just creating chaos behind the scenes. Like that, this is truly just two possibly dysfunctional, like chemistry wise teams facing off. Uh, anything could honestly happen. Anything could happen in any Big Ten game, but I don't think this is a surefire as, uh, yeah. I mean, Michigan State's down bad, but this Minnesota team might be as well. What do you think, Jordan? Um, I, and my, in my perfect bracket, I have Minnesota winning, so I'm going to keep rhyming that Minnesota. But, hey, speaking of computers, Burke, look at this. <laughs> Michigan State, Ken Palm, 19, net 24. And I know they, Minnesota and Michigan State played two totally different schedules. But at the end of the day, Ken Palm, same record, Ken Palm, 75, 87. Like, I'm with you, man. They are just on Michigan State. They are State's the greatest balls. team to ever lose the shitload of games ever. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's 18 and 13. Are crazy. you kidding me? It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I think for the I, I really hope Minnesota wins because I want that Michigan State Indiana State. Fun, uh, yeah, first doesn't <laughs> doesn't looking at that just piss you off? What is this? Yeah. Where does this computer get off? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell does this computer think he is? Next game, Jr. I'm tired of talking about Michigan State. <laughs> yeah. it, it's January, just, February, and Izzo. If I hear that one more time. I look at the adjusted offense and the adjusted defense, which, you know, I'm sure somebody's watching this or listening to this right now. Like, oh, you guys don't understand how Ken Palm operates. Sure. I, I, maybe I don't. But <laughs> I never will. Correctly. I never will. Obviously. I know it's a predictive <laughs> metric. I know they're predicting like, you know, uh, Michigan State will be 24th, but Michigan State has never at any point in the season looked like a top 25 team at all. Uh, or I, I said 24th that's net uh, 19th they've not looked like a top 20 team at all at any point this season so the numbers can love them they can have a a ninth ranked defense but I mean how much of that ninth ranked defense is just teams playing bad offense (laughs) against them and uh that's just the team playing bad offense I don't really know but it's uh at the end of the day I I don't believe in Michigan State if I was going to pick a uh uh, prediction in this one I, honestly i would not be surprised to see minnesota score something like 68 and michigan state only get to like 62 or something like that uh, that's providing if dawson garcia you know actually plays well and uh, everybody else plays around him but the way i look at it is that dawson garcia right now if he does want to go to the portal he's gonna ball out as best he possibly can and it's not for yeah. minnesota but he wants to try to go somewhere bigger he probably wants to go somewhere like Duke, UNC, or something like that. You know, one of these guys who goes and be a key transfer for one of those schools and uh, really ball out there. So uh, I, I I believe the chaos stuff behind the scenes is probably happening. But at the end of the day, like, I'm sure he still wants to play well and wants to do well. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Christie also, like, if he's trying to go to the league or if he's trying to make himself a I don't think better. Christie's an NBA player yet. I think he needs at least one more year. No, but all- even then, like, he's the type of guy that a lot of coaches will whisper in his ear whether oh, yeah. Ben oh, yeah. Johnson likes it or not. Yeah. What do you think, Jordan? I, I, I Burke's spot on about it, Christy. I think I think Chris is going to roll out. I think. I mean, oh, I meant I meant prediction prediction. For oh, the game. oh, sorry, Jr. Sorry, uh, <laughs> you're good. Uh, you're good. No, um, yeah, my bracket says Minnesota. I got a feeling, uh, Michigan State in March. Man, it's just like like Burke said, they're trying to write the story for them. And I I guarantee you, Kelly Pfeiffer is going to roll out there, and PJ is going to roll there as the referees. I'm going to see them put on their clown show. And they're going to do everything possible <laughs> for Michigan State to win this game. But I'm hoping Minnesota does it, man. I just want to see Michigan State sweat on Sunday. So you're predicting a bad game by Stripes? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the Big Ten. Yeah. Well, can we get them on this game, on this huddle in the offseason? Yeah. <laughs> Reach out to Kelly Pfeiffer. I want him on this show with Dave. Me, Dave, and Kelly Pfeiffer. Hey, Ken, <laughs> bring Ken Palm on, too, because we're going to bring up Burke. Well, that would be another episode. I want to talk to Ken Palm about his computer. So – Computers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I don't even know where I would start with him. <laughs> no, I just, I just Kenneth Pomeroy. Uh, all right, Bert, where do you get prediction? off ruining basketball? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Burke, what's your prediction? Uh, you know what? You made a case for Minnesota. I'm going to take them. I didn't feel really solid one way or the other. Let's go, Minnesota, sixty. For Michigan State, 60. I like it. All right. Good choice. All right, guys. Let's talk about the uh, the hottest team in college basketball going up against, uh, you know, some Hawkeyes. It's fine. Whatever. Whoever they are. But uh, Ohio State, Jake Diebler dealing right now. He's afraid of nobody in the Big Ten. Nobody can uh, face him right now. And uh, you got the Hawkeyes who – they had a poor offensive showing their last game, which means typically they're going to come out and score like 90 this next game. So probably going to be uh, can Ohio State keep up with Iowa here. But uh, I am uh, fairly confident going into this one, but also at the same time concerned whenever I do get confident. So probably, you know, we'll get my heart crushed. That's OK. Burke, what are your thoughts? I mean, five wins in six games. Jake and the Deeblers are actually like they're just rolling. They're rolling. The, like it's it is a lot of that Indiana thing where uh, yeah I I sorry newsflash to anybody listening I look through everything through the Indiana lens like when I'm understanding what's going on with this Big Ten conference and uh, this Ohio State team looks like they are equaling the sum of their parts. Jamison Battle is the best shooter in college or in the Big Ten for sure, forty four percent from deep. Uh, Bruce Thornton sixteen point one points per game. But it, it, it is like, I don't know. They, they just have, they're playing with house money and they're just letting it ride. And uh, honestly, the talent is just free to, free to play. It doesn't look so obstructed and just tied down. Your thoughts, Jordan? All right, I want to reference the 2004 Maryland team again. The reason they won that tournament, and they talk about, they just had the 20th anniversary this year. They talk about it. They put everything to the side. And Gary Williams said, let's just go out there and play basketball. And I really think Ohio State is just going out there and playing basketball. Throw the playbook out the window and just play play basketball. They're playing with house money, okay? Holtman Holtman gets fired. The season's a wrap, right? All of a sudden, they get hot. They get a couple big wins. Okay, let's say they don't make a turn. Let's say they lose tomorrow. Okay, well, guess what? We had a good, fun end of the year. We might have our coach of the future. I don't know, but let's build on this. Or they keep winning, and next thing you know, I mean, let's be honest. I think they win tomorrow night. They 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 might be in off one win. They're going to need two, two, I think, to get in, depending on how, how the bubble is shaping up. But, man, they're, they're just – they're actually a fun team to watch right now. It's hard to believe as bad as they were. I mean, they've got it rolling. And I'll give you my prediction right now, JR. I think Ohio State wins. I think Ohio State rolls Iowa. You know why? If Maryland can beat Iowa twice, anybody can beat Iowa. They're the seven, Big Ten was so bad this year. Iowa was the seventh seed. Let that sink in. Uh, Iowa, I mean, they have they have good freshman talent. The Brock Harding, Owen Freeman, those kind of guys. Like they they're, they're going to be good and they're going to be able to uh, to play well. But they've only lost. I, th- I think they've only lost two games in a row once this season when they lost to Purdue and then that close game. 
uh, was that home or away for Iowa? I think it was. I think it was home for Iowa. Yeah, you guys beat them at home, didn't you? Who? Yeah, Maryland. Maryland, oh, we, we Maryland beat minute. them at at Iowa. I thought. Yeah, we we did, but I, I thought okay. it was a little earlier. But you know, I, I just realized this, and you all probably might have said I was not paying attention. This is the bubble game. I mean, you lose, you're done. You're you're going to NIT. You win, you're still alive. I mean, they're both right there on the cusp of the tournament. It's crazy. Um, I correct myself. They did lose three in a row to Purdue in Iowa State in Michigan. <laughs> mm. I laugh whenever I see anybody lose to Michigan. Um, no, I, I completely agree, Jordan. That's that's what this game is, and we pointed it out when it when the tournament bracket released. Like these are the two teams right now that have to do well in the Big Ten tournament in order to make the NCAA tournament, and both of them need to win their first game and most likely need to win their second game in order to get in because the second game will have the quad one distinction that they need to help them just get a little bit further. I think both of these teams are capable of beating Illinois, but at the end of the day, I think both of them are very capable of beating each other. And I could see this one going either way. And let me just add one more thing. The reason I keep making that connection to the 04 team is that 04 team was on the bubble and they needed to get at least one win the ACC tournament. They went on to win it. That's what I, that's why I keep making this connection. Ohio state and Iowa remind me of that 04 team very well. Can one of the players from either one team, Tony Perkins, can he take over? I don't think Tony's that guy that can take over for a whole weekend, just being honest. A great ball player, but I don't think he can take over. And Ohio State, Thornton, I mean, Kenny, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I don't know. If, if we're playing that game, like, dude, I think the guy to take over in this game would be my pick. He was my preseason pick for Big Ten Villain of the Year, uh, Peyton Sanford. Sanford, yeah. Honestly, over the last eight games, averaging 20.5 points, mm-hmm. he's, he's mm-hmm. been, like – the way that this year he he started out the season taking an approach where he's like, I'm going to get to the rim. I'm going to show them that I have this aspect to my game. He, and uh, it seems like over the course of this not, this conference schedule, he has found a balance of mixing the outside with the in that he just didn't have. And he, he is truly reaching his third evolution of Big Ten villainy. And I'm excited to see what we will get from it. He was on draft boards for a little while. There were people... Well, no, no, we need him. We need him. As much as I don't like him, like I, I'm going to be sad to see him go. I, I love rooting against that guy. I think he'll come back next year, though. I don't think Good. he'll actually. Good. He'll probably test the draft and see, do one of those things where you see, need, see where he needs to improve, and then come back for one more year and correct those things. But um, no, I, oh, I think the old the the- Mbako maneuver. That's what I'm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right there. <laughs> Um, I think at the end of the day, I think Ohio State pulls it out. I'm deathly afraid of picking my team to win. However, you know, this is what Jake Diebler has done to me. He has made me believe in the team that I once hated. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's. Hey, if he, if he, are- if he, what would it take for him to have the job in your mind? In my mind, he needs to uh, make the Sweet 16 to get the job. You can't be serious right now. I want him to come back and be an assistant for either Sean Miller or dusty may but i just don't think he like has the like he doesn't have any experience as a head coach that makes me really nervous dude, to hire dude, somebody. this is my argument for everybody who uses that right now this college coaching right now nobody has experience nobody has experience they're all learning right now how to coach in today's game and dude, in uh, the in the Big Ten, the Big Ten, every single coach came in. With I, no, I mean, dude, it's a totally new. There could I be a coach that comes on, hard. rethinks everything, and is finding the right talent, bringing them in, utilizing NIL to an extent that the other these old guys might not be. Like it, it, it is a new game, and these young guys can find success. I, I genuinely believe that. Hold on, I just looked into my crystal ball. Jake Diebler, they do not keep him as head coach. Indiana no, no, Flyers. They're, they're, no, they're hold on, hold on, no, no, it's still, it's still, it's still foggy. Mike Woodson gets fired from Indiana, and they, Indiana says, this is our guy. This is our guy. We're going to hire him. No, but honestly, if Jake Dealer leaves Ohio State, you all don't sign him, or you don't extend him, make him the coach. You whatever. know what? The, yeah, you're joking there. Somewhere. Hey, you're joking there, but last time we hired a Buckeye, it worked pretty well. That's true. That's very true. Not pretty well for you when that happened. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. What is it? Is, it, is old Bob? Is old Bobby Knight a Buckeye? Oh yeah, national champion Buckeye. Our we second said, best. Our we second said, best. Thank you. Our <laughs> second best coach ever at Maryland was a Dukey, so I know how that feels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another R. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think I'm in the minority. There's a lot of Ohio State fans that just want him hired. 
right now. Oh. That like don't, don't even finish the season. Just hire him now in the middle yeah. of the Big Ten tournament and make him the full time head coach and everything. So, which I don't know. I just I get so concerned about experience and can they make it happen? And yeah, and also I just want Sean Miller. That's who I want more than anything else. You know, Maryland had him on an airplane to take the job in 2011 or 2012. Yeah, before he went we to got, Arizona. Yeah, no, no, he was in Arizona. We had him oh, flying too. And and Maryland, be in Maryland, who wants to be Northwestern or an Ivy League school, they would not make an adjustment for the missions that he wanted to get in. He was trying to get a missions change for players. They wouldn't do it, so he never. Works. Yeah, take the job. A lot of people said Sean Miller used us as a leverage for a new contract under Arizona, but oh my gosh, I would have killed for Sean Miller back then. Yeah. Um, all right. Did you guys give your predictions? I forget. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll move on from this one. Uh, Dave has a question. So let me bring this up. So that way I know when I'm clipping stuff later. Uh, so we'll end with this. Who is worse? The ACC or the big 10? Both are mm. not great so far this year, but one of these conferences does have Louisville and I think Louisville <laughs> is worse than Michigan. So <laughs> that might be my determining factor, but I'm curious. Here's Jordan. Um, of course, ACC. I'm an ACC hater now. Big Ten, born and bred, baby. 2014. Let's roll. What do you think, Burke? Uh, the well, I'd I'd like to switch officials for one season and see what the result would be. Uh, just because I th- I think Big Ten officiating is causing so many problems. <laughs> the play style, everything, man. Uh, I I think the Big Ten's better, but I'm a homer. So. Uh. That we previewed did JR, do you say we're all done? Well, I was gonna bring this up really fast because Michael is booing me. Uh, Michael, I you brought up do I want to crown Jake Gabler the new head coach of Ohio State? We just talked about it, so I didn't think I needed to bring your comment up, but I will bring it up. Uh, sure, if he wants to be the head coach, that's fine. I'm not really my first choice, but I wouldn't be mad oh, at the decision. Oh, hold on, JR, Michael, yes. Michael Hogg. I got two things for you, Jar. Before we wrap up, Michael Hogg, I'm a high school umpire. Also, uh, that's a terrible stance you're in. Your back's going to be killing you. You got to get in the slot and you got to get wider. Uh, look at his profile picture. Uh, second thing, you're not going to talk about Maryland's game tomorrow. We're not going to preview it. Well, I didn't have plan, but if you want to, let's do it. Oh, uh, let's tee it up. Absolutely. Right. We had to- <laughs> but first, I do need to tell Michael Hogg. He is. Uh, he remains the commenter of the year on the Big Ten Huddle. He. Uh, he. Nobody sends more chats than Michael does. So, Michael, oh, we appreciate Michael. you. Shout out to Michael. All right, sure. Let's talk about Wisconsin. I don't have a uh, the little no, graphic. You don't, you don't even need it. it. You don't even need it. I'm All gonna right, tell you all real quick. Book it. Book it. Maryland winner. Give it to me, Burt. Yeah, I have Jameer Young winning that. Yep, there it is, baby. If, if they can just – I'm telling you, you don't know how worried I am. I can tell you right now, if you turn on that game tomorrow and we score 15 points in the first half, don't be surprised. Do not be surprised. I'd actually take the under. If anybody's betting, take the under because who knows what Maryland basketball team will show up tomorrow. But hey. Who knows what Wisconsin basketball team is going to show up tomorrow. Dude, this hey. is the Big Ten. <laughs> You'd never know. Let, let, hey, real quick, can we get off subject one more time, Jerry? Kill uh, I'm going to just bring this up. Ken Palm, has, <laughs> Ken Palm has Wisconsin winning by three, 68 to 65 over Maryland. That's closer than I thought it was. Hey, be. that is a nice line. I yeah. like that. So, we're, all right, we're go dogs. Ahead, we got the dog in us. Um, Greg Gard is not a good coach. Can we all agree with that? Yes. Okay. All right. Just sure. uh, yeah, he's never blown me away. I just no. thought he's just. What's he? I, th- I think he's had more runs than Matt Painter, um, by the way. Um, <laughs> Purdue will lose. The first weekend again, book that also. I'm putting all kinds of hot takes out here. A two time 16 yeah. seed no. loss. Well, no, 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 no. I didn't say first day, first weekend. Oh, first, first weekend. weekend. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to face Florida Atlantic. The I'm, such a, I'm such a Purdue hater. I'm such a Purdue hater. They're going to have, they're going to have, who would be an eight, nine seed? One more bracket matrix. I just, yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, JR. I'm extending. Oh, what, what, what did my boy Michael Hogg say again? Yeah, he said he's giving me a hard time. We appreciate you, Michael. And then uh, yeah. here, Jordan, you read it. This one's for you. You read it, Jordan. Oh, hold on. I got to get back to my screen. I was looking at the back. Oh, here we go. It's uh, first off, Turtlehead. That was a wild pitch. And I was in the process of getting out of the way. We need to talk Turtlehead about baseball, but I can't see what your Turtle Head All right. Hey, perfect time. Look at that. Michael's setting us up. So, my yeah, boy, Michael. There you go. So, I'm going to plug my show. You go with that, JR? Can I plug my show? Do it. Do it. All right. So, it's. 
Turtleheads Talk on Twitter and Instagram. We are on Apple and Spotify, Turtleheads Podcast. Uh, great show. And actually, Michael, I don't know where you're from. We actually just had a high school baseball coach who was in the um, – help me out here um, – Hampton, Sydney College Baseball Hall of Fame. He was looked at by the Pirates. Great baseball career. You will love listening to that show. It was a great interview with him, Todd Lantman. But uh, give us a shout, Michael. I, I cannot wait to tell the Boiler Express guys that you're getting along with a Purdue fan. Is he a Purdue fan? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, what a Michael, reveal. What a reveal, I, I, JR. You are a professional producer. I, I love this. This is perfect. I'll, get, I'll give JR $10 if he can go a whole month without getting Russ oh, on his show. Jordan, you like a Purdue <laughs> fan, dude. Oh. I am so glad that I no, have I'm seen so Jordan find a friendship with a Purdue fan. Um, Burke, tell us where you can find your podcast at. You can find my podcast anywhere you listen to your podcast. It is at it is often daunted. Uh, to play on our uh, fight song, you know, never daunted. We cannot falter. Uh, quite frankly, this program has this program has been often daunted for some time now. Uh, you can feel free to follow me everywhere across all socials at often daunted. And as always, Jr. I just uh, can't appreciate it enough for you having me on. Yeah, of course, you, getting big and, time uh, with these home field ads. One last time before uh, we head out of here. Burke, Michael says, here's the kicker. My degree <laughs> is from IU, so all kinds of reviews. Yeah, tonight. my guy. They are. <laughs> no, they are. I have a brother at Purdue right now, so I'm, like, so <laughs> torn about. I'm like, man, I wish history spe- rings true and Purdue goes down week one. No, no, I'm, I got you. I'm also I got you. like, I want my brother to have a good time. I do. Because I remember when Indiana was a one seed and forgot how to – play against a zone defense when Syracuse rolled into town and uh down goes Oladipo and sell. Hey, real quick, JR, Burke, Purdue loses to Florida second uh um second round. Book it's going to shot. Write it down. Florida or Florida Atlantic? No, Florida. I just looked at no, they're pretty to be an eight seed baby. Tell me Florida would not beat Purdue. Come on. <laughs> they did lose to Michigan though, didn't they? Or did they beat Michigan? Not now, not now. I have to remember. Dude, I Hold just, on. I just, I we just have to can't check this really fast. About it, man. I just have to pray to this God. This is my barometer for who is good. This is my barometer for who is good and who is bad. Oh no, they went to double overtime. They did beat Michigan, one hundred and six to one hundred and one, in double overtime. They won't. So. They won't need overtime to beat Purdue. All right. <laughs> that is not going to happen, Turtle. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate you, uh, Jordan, Burke. Thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, if Maryland wins tomorrow night, we'll have Lee on, and uh, that'll be a good time. We'll have Lee back here. So uh, more turtle heads for you if Maryland keeps winning. And so. if Indiana loses tomorrow night, you just won't find me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Burke's going off the map. See you, everybody. Have a good night. See you, guys.